When a breakout claim does something different, I normally sit up and take notice. And that's because when a breakout claim does something different, quite often you get a sleeper hit on your hands. And that's exactly what I think about Twin Breaker, a sacred symbols adventure. Twin Breaker was released earlier this year for PC, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation Vita and PlayStation 4. And it's a PS4 version you see on your screens. I picked it up recently in a sale. This game um, was kind of marketed on a it's breakout but with a story mode and I have to say that's the most least exciting section of all the twists and turns that they've done to the breakout gameplay. Actually the real clue for this is in the title with the word twin because you're always playing not with just one bat and a ball but two bats and one ball and the two bats stay in their own quarters of the screen and they will never cross over. So you need to instantly become ambidextrous both physically and mentally because you need to kind of track not only where the ball is going as it bounces off the bricks and you clear them but then also which bat you're going to need to line up for it to land to kind of push off and whilst initially the game is quite forgiving with this very quickly the brick count kind of gets lower and lower and closer to the bats so that you have to kind of really mentally line up both things at the same time and move them and that can be a little bit of an uphill battle to begin with for the first few goes that you play. Thankfully there are lots of power-ups for you to play with um, that can sometimes make your ball uh, invincible so it just smashes all bricks no matter how many hits they're supposed to take. Some of them uh, will have a little bomb on that will explode. You can get multi-ball as well so that's all good fun um, and you can get a little shooty gun on your bat as well as making the bat bigger or smaller. Aside from that what it then does is then switch up where these two bats are placed. So you'll start off with both from the bottom of the screen for the first 10 levels. The next 10 levels you then go full on Pong with one on the left side of the screen and one on the right and all the blocks are in the middle. And that's actually for me was probably the easiest section of the game because it makes sense to me <laughs> where you was kind of both... If I kind of say you're playing both sides of the tennis match it kind of made sense and I could levy it up in my head. Where the game then gets really fiendish is when it combines that Pong left and right bat with the two bats on the bottom as well. So you're now controlling four bats at once. And they all stay in their own little sections, never though shall they cross. And you'll be moving up and down on the analog sticks to move the side to side buttons. But on the uh, bottom, you'll be moving left and right on each analog stick to move those uh, bats on the bottom of the screen left and right and that kind of done me in mentally because I couldn't quite work it all out and keep in track and make sure that everything was in the right place at the right time. It's a difficulty curve, not one that I've fully recovered from. However, the bar of actually passing each level is relatively low. You get a time limit for each level to try and pass. If you then fail that time limit, it doesn't then kick you out and say game over, like alien ships start crashing in and smashing up the blocks for you and that just gets taken away from your score. And the idea with this score is that the score unlocks more story for you to then read in the background, but it also then unlocks more achievements, more modes for you to kind of play with and unlock as well. Um, so it's kind of in your interests to try and be as quick as possible and as accurate as possible so that you can get those high scores, get the combos, and then unlock everything that kind of comes before that, or after that, sorry. There's 40 levels in all, and then you get New Game Plus for you to try and do even better where the layouts are tougher um, and you've got more stringent kind of uh, power-ups all kind of flying around everywhere and then you've got a variety of other different modes as well like coin collector mode which is like um, a shoot em up without the shooting then there's like a shoot em up mode where you've got the gun power up constantly on your bat so you need to kind of hit the enemies and avoid everything else and collect the coins again uh, and a few things like boss rush mode as well because after every 10 levels you get a boss those bosses kind of devolved over the course of the game. I felt like the first two were much better than the last two. And I think that's because where you've got more bats everywhere, there's less room for you to kind of muck it up 
<laughs> in theory, when it comes to the boss. So you can just attack it and win. Um, but the spectacle and the changing up of the gameplay was certainly most welcome. So yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, outside of Grey Blocks and Shatter, I've not had any kind of real big um, ooze when it's comes for a breakout style game for a, probably a good 18 months, two years or so. So it's been a pleasant surprise to have Twin Breaker pop onto my screens. Uh, and I do recommend it to people that like the, blo uh, the breakout style of gameplay. Um, really good on the handheld as well with the Vita. Uh, and I'm assuming it will be great on the Switch as well, although I don't own a Switch. But yeah, good on the big screen or small. And you don't need that story mode after all. Thanks for watching. Written review will be over on highplanegames.com. Till next time, bye for now. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a collection of media projects ran by me. If you like what you see and want to find out more, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support can make so much more possible, be that a like, a comment, a share, or a pledge. Thanks for watching.